It's, it's self-inflicted at this point because we were addicted to these things at an early age and then that's how we've been. Actually, the most allowed addiction on the planet is our sugar addiction, is in our addiction to carbohydrates. Have you ever lied about food? Or hey guys, today we're gonna talk about food addiction and I'm actually gonna prove to you that it's real and I'm gonna prove to you it's real by asking questions and you're gonna think about it and you're gonna let me know the answer in the comments or you're gonna let yourself know the answer. There's no judgment here. I would like us to like have a back and forth conversation so we can help one another. Do you sneak food? What that means is, do you eat food and try to hide it from other people? Or do you go into the closet and like shove a couple cookies in your mouth and hope nobody saw you? When you're eating something that you know you shouldn't be eating because you feel bad eating it, do you have to convince yourself that this is the last time even though you know it's not gonna be the last time? Do you hide evidence of food that you've eaten? Do you take the wrapper and sneak it away somewhere or do you put it somewhere where you hope your significant other or anybody else, your mom, your dad, isn't, isn't gonna find it? Guys, these are like actual things addicts do. It doesn't matter if you're a drug addict, it doesn't matter if you're a food addict, it doesn't matter what you're addicted to. These are like similar things that people will do when they have an addiction to something. Do you binge eat any specific foods? When I ask that, that's a, definitely a subject related to addiction because when people lose control of the foods of their addiction, they just go and do it. They can't control it. So binge eating is a form of unable to control something. The point is, if you answered yes to any of these, I got it, um, you know, it's happened to all of us. We've all suffered from some addiction, I'm sure one time or another. And actually the most allowed addiction on the planet is our sugar addiction, is in our addiction to carbohydrates. Because if you look over that list that I just asked you, you're gonna see that the foods that are actually healthy are not the ones you're craving. You're gonna see that the foods that you're craving and you have an addiction to are junk food, carbohydrates. They're really foods that are not foods. These substances that are not good for your body and are not really nutrition and are not really food those are the things that you're addicted to and those are the things that you're probably eating. And what happens is you wanna keep eating these things but in your mind you know you don't like your body image or you know that you're sick or something's wrong but you keep eating these foods and that really is the, that is the sign that there's an addiction. And once you start eating a way that's healthy, your cravings go away. Actually creating these problems in our own bodies by continuously eating these foods. And I understand it's, it's too accessible. In the United States, these foods are in Western civilizations. These foods are very accessible. You know, uh, you go to the grocery store and if you go on the outer walls of the grocery store, those are the foods that you should be eating. And yet the rest of the grocery store is full of packaged and boxed foods by food corporations that, and those are the things that we're addicted to. And would you go out of your way to eat bacon? No, but you will go out of your way to go get an ice cream cone, I bet. You'll go out of your way to get pizza. You'll go out of your way to get these things that you're craving so badly but are doing nothing but harm uh, to you, to you. And it's, it's self-inflicted at this point because we were addicted to these things at an early age and then that's how we've been eating since. You gotta stop eating the junk food. You gotta stop eating the carbohydrates. You need to abstain from it completely uh, for a good period of time. And you're like, okay, cool, but what do I replace it with? How do I handle this? Stop eating those foods. We have to 100% get these refined carbohydrates and carbohydrates out of our body and out of our system and out of our life. And that's how we're gonna handle it. And I know that sounds terrible. And the question is, so what do I replace it with? You have to replace it with real, one ingredient whole foods and you need to replace it with a lot of fatty meats. I know it's against everything we've ever learned and you just gotta try it. But, so how do you do this? What are your steps? What steps are you gonna take to handle this? One, you're gonna get a garbage bag and you're gonna get everything prepackaged and boxed out of your house. If it's not one ingredient, get rid of it. If you can't understand the ingredients, get rid of it. Just leave the foods that are one ingredient in your house and get rid of everything else. And if you don't know what one ingredient means, it's like bacon, it's like eggs, it's like butter, it's like chicken. Those are one ingredient things, you know what they are. So you're gonna start eating those foods. You're gonna start eating a lot of those foods. Eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Eat till you're fully satiated so that you can get from one meal to the next without wanting to eat food. Does that make sense? You're not gonna want a snack. You wanna eat so much that you're not gonna want a snack and that you can get to the next place. Because if you want a snack, you're gonna, you're gonna revert to snack foods, which are the problem. 
Another step you're going to take is that you're going to tell your friends and family that you're doing an elimination diet and you're trying to eliminate things that are bad for your body. You don't, I don't care. You can tell them you're doing a keto or carnivore sort of diet, but people tend to have bad reactions to that when they're okay with the word elimination diet and really you're doing the same thing. In effect, it's the same thing. So, but you wanna just let them know so that they're on your side and uh, you can get some agreement so that they're not gonna push the, uh, the junk food and the garbage and the ultra processed foods on you. Uh, I would do this for at least 30 days. I would take notes of the improvements that you see and I would also take notes of any negatives. The negatives I think will only really show up while you're first changing over because part of addiction is a withdrawal phase. You're gonna withdraw from, from garbage, you're gonna withdraw from junk food, and you're gonna withdraw from all these carbohydrate-y sort of foods that your body's addicted to. So you might feel flu symptoms, you might feel some withdrawal symptoms, and you need to get through that. And that will be at the beginning, or it could be at the beginning. Maybe it won't be at the beginning, but it could be at the beginning. And then you, so take note of that, but also take note of anything good that you notice and not just weight loss, like sleeping better, uh, feeling better, more energy, less depressed. Take note of all these things. Um, you're gonna wanna get some electrolytes and you're gonna wanna take those during this process. You wanna get things that are like a good product, apparently not an affiliate, but apparently Element is good or uh, Dr. Berry helped develop a formula called Keto Chow. When you get electrolytes, you wanna make sure it doesn't have maltodextrin or dextrose in it because that's a terrible thing that is a carbohydrate that's equal or worse than sugar apparently. So make sure that you don't have that in your electrolytes because it's gonna almost defeat the purpose of what you're trying to do, which is get these toxic substances out of your body. Next piece of advice is during the next 30 days, don't go out to eat because you don't know how those foods are prepared and what sorts of things are actually in them, what fillers they use, what type of oil they use. It could be highly refined, ultra processed seed oils, which fall into this category of, of junk food. So I would say don't go out to eat and prepare your own foods. I know it's like a different lifestyle. It's a different way than we're used to when you've got McDonald's, Domino's, Burger King, Starbucks on every corner, KFC, and you could just, you know, swing through the drive-thru. We can't do that anymore. We can't do that for the next month. And I'm saying a month because you can do anything for a month and then in, at the end you can reevaluate what you want to do with your body. Okay, people, that's it. So I would like to know in the comments what you think. I would also like to know if any of this information about food addiction is real to you or if you've experienced any of it. So let me know what you think down below. And I will put up here another video that you can watch that explains more how to do a diet such as this to eliminate the garbage out of your body and how you are going to feel a lot better. Okay, cool. Bye.